billion dollar plan. I spoke about these negotiations with Democrat Nanette Barragan, who represents our state's 44th congressional district. Note, this was before the big news broke. The plans for paid family leave had been dropped. Barragan began by telling me about the strategy she and her colleagues in the Congressional Progressive Caucus have been taking, especially with the 2022 elections so close on the horizon. Well, the first thing is making sure that we're looking at programs that we want to enact that have been long overdue, that have been neglected, um, and then checking out to see what can we get in uh, to the final bill. Now, you mentioned uh, we are at the mercy of Senate Democrats uh, and what they're willing to do. So it has become a conversation on them asking, to, you know, us asking them and saying, hey, what do you want? What are you willing uh, to put in for the American people? Because this is for the people and this is for the children in our planet. And, uh, and that's really where it's been. It's making sure that we can get some of these long overdue programs um, in effect. If we can get something and then build on it later, uh, that is uh, better than nothing. As you mentioned, this is for the people of our planet. It's for the people of our country. And yet sometimes even if you see eye to eye on the agenda, the specific needs are going to be very different depending on where you live. Just this week, the LA Times reporting in terms of the funding that will go uh, to addressing our housing and homelessness crisis and what it might look like in New York where the the stock of public housing is so much greater. It might be a great deal for them not as great for us. So how do you view all of this? You know, on the one hand, you're working with all of these representatives from all over the country, but what we've got here in Southern California might be very different than other situations that other states are facing. Well, that's true, and that's part of the conversation. You hear from different members from different perspectives uh, regarding to their districts and what they need, and you come up with that middle ground so that everybody gets a piece of what they need. It doesn't matter whether you're in Los Angeles or you're in Kentucky. Climate change is happening as we speak. We're seeing wildfires. We're seeing droughts. We're seeing uh, hurricanes. And that's happening across the country, whether you're in a red district or a blue district. Climate change is not discriminating. And so that's why we've got to keep firm on making sure we have bold investments in climate as, as many as we can have. Yeah. And, and on that front, uh, recent reports that Joe Manchin is pushing to get rid of a provision which would impose a fee on emissions of methane from oil and gas wells. You know, again, that's probably super popular among many of his constituents. It's the exact opposite for yours. So Nanette Baragana, how do you try to convince your colleagues that, you know, no, 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 we can't go this way? Well, you know, everybody has to stand up for their district and fight for what they believe in. And, and that we're continuing to do that. Um, we're at the mercy of the Senate numbers. Uh, we have exactly 50 Democratic senators. Um, and so we have to look at this as fighting for what's best for our districts, seeing where we land and then building on that as we move forward. To that end, you were recently on the House floor lobbying on behalf of spending for the purchase and installation of zero emissions technology at the ports. How's that looking in the midst of all these negotiations? And, and can you remind, especially for us here in Southern California, why this is such a critical issue to you? Our bill, the Climate Smart Ports Act, is included right now in the reconciliation package. And we're very excited about that because this is an investment in ports and port communities. You know, almost 40% of the American people live uh, within a, a very short parameter of ports. And so this is going to help clean up air pollution and port air. And we've got to move toward zero emissions. There's a lot of uh, talk about low emissions, but if we're going to go green and we're going to make sure we're fighting climate, we've got to go zero emissions. And so right now, it's very we're very hopeful. It's, it looks like it's still in reconciliation and it's still part of the priority. And so we are excited about that opportunity. But there's a lot more we also need to do, uh, making sure we're investing in, you know, in an infrastructure for electrification for medium and heavy duty trucks and uh, so many other investments in EVs and, and tax credits for clean energy. I would love to see us move off of the fossil fuel subsidies. They don't need it. Um, they are making profits. Um, and really, it's, it's old. We got to phase it out. I'm not sure we're going to get there, but we're going to keep fighting. 
Your district, of course, includes the port, and lately we've seen so much focus on supply chain issues, and President Biden has responded with this plan to make operations go around the clock, and that might be great news for the businesses and many of the residents hoping to get their Christmas shopping done or the holiday shopping done in time in your district. But then that's a lot of more trucks going back and forth. There's other issues that come up with this. So, so what do you feel like is the best path forward when it comes to our ports? Well, first of all, we do have to fix the backlog issue. Um, when you are off the coast, you see these ships out there, and we've got to make sure that they're able to come in and unload. But you raise a great issue, and that is the environmental justice issues of having the ports run 24-7 um, and the increased truck traffic, which is why we've got to move quickly as fast as we can to make sure that these trucks are clean, to make sure they're not screwing out you know, what they are screwing out now, and which is uh, air pollution that's harming our communities. Um, it, we just got to continue and invest, invest in our ports. And I know one thing I've heard is this is a, a step, the 24-7 operations at the ports, but it's not going to fix the problem long term. And so we've got to look at other issues and things that we can do to fix this problem long term. COVID has not helped the situation at all. Uh, so we'll be continuing to look at those options and working with the port and the president to do all we can to fix the backlog while keeping environmental justice and the communities on the front lines in mind. Congresswoman Nanette Baragan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.